Welcome back, everyone, to the Maddie Betts podcast. It is October 20th, and tomorrow is UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. The main event is Alexander Volkanovsky versus Islam Makachev. And for the co main event, we have Kamara Usman versus Hamzat Chemaev. And today, we have a very, very special guest that I am excited and grateful to have a part of the show. He is one of my favorite fighters to watch in the UFC. 15 wins, an expert in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and an extremely well-rounded mixed martial artist, and an even better person, Gilbert Burns. Gilbert, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank, I'm, thank you guys for having me here. You know, it took a little long. It got super late, but <laughs> I made it. Sorry. Sorry for making you guys wait. Dude, really appreciate you jumping on today. I have so much that I want to dive into on this podcast. First and foremost, how are you feeling? When are you looking to get back in there? Feeling great, you know, back on training now, uh, still not 100%. Like, I still avoiding landing on my shoulder, putting all the weight. Dips is still, still kind of getting stronger. Mm -hmm. I can't do so many dips right now. I'm like dying to do 10. And I'm like, <laughs> so that's the only thing. And underhooks is still fighting to get good underhooks. Yeah. So just getting the, the, the body strong right now. And the motion board get confident throwing the punch, landing, doing anything for a fight. Yeah. I believe beginning next year, I would say February. February was the, my target, but then I heard, see, from, <laughs> I gotta break this for you guys. I heard Ooh. UFC might come back to Miami in March. Ooh. So if they really come me, I, I'm not fighting February, I'm fighting March. Dude, I would love to go back to Miami. I was at that card live. Yeah. That was a great night. Uh, we had some we had some big bets on that card. Some did really well. Some didn't do so hot. But that's how it goes. Is there anyone that you have on your radar that you're looking to fight, or you just want to get back in there? I don't know. So many fights happening right now. Finally, was with the the division was was kind of not fighting. Nothing happening. But right now, everyone's fighting. Uh, to be honest. I do think uh, Leon Edwards is going to win against Kobe. That's mm. that's what I think. And it will be so nice to fight Kobe here in Miami. That, that's my number uh, one pick. I would but, love to see that fight. Yeah, yeah, but still a lot of things to happen. You know, yeah. Leon got to win and a lot of things. But I just... And a lot of fights is true. You know, I know no one wants to fight Shavkat. I know I will fight. And we'll see. You gotta, I want to make a big fight. But on the same time, I want a fight that makes sense, not just for me, for me, for my opponent, for the promotion, for the fans. Yep. But I want a big fight. I got to ask you, since you brought it up, the Leon edwards Colby covington fight. That is one that the odds have gone back and forth on. I think it's pretty close to a pick em, though. The odds makers are saying it's like a coin toss fight. What do you like about Leon's style that you think he would get the win there? I think he the, just the fact that he lost to Kamaru the first time by... The wrestling, Kamar start taking him down and, and kind of grinding him to a decision. Mm -hmm. And then the way he looked on the second fight, I I, 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 I studied Leon Edwards a lot and I know how good he was. And he said he wasn't looking good. He said he felt the altitude and everything and I believe it. And then I said, next time the, the trilogy, even though I trained with Kamar, I said, bro, that guy, if the guy shows up, the way I think he can't at home, come on, coming from a loss, got the rematch super quick. I, I said, no, Leo's going to win that fight. And then he did, and then he showed me the improvement on the grappling and on the wrestling that I knew already was a good, a good level. I think he improved it so much, and he's striking so clean. Oh, man. I think he's so underrated. I think he's one of the best strikes in the UFC. Yeah. I think Leo is that good. But he's not the guy that has the charisma. He's not the guy that has a huge following. But I think he's that good. And I think he's going to be Kobe. That, that's why I think he's going to be Kobe. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And, you know, what's interesting about this, and we'll get into this here in a little, but the Hamzat Kamara fight, I think so many people are quick to say that Kamara is getting older or getting a little bit washed. But it, Leon is just that good. I, I, and I so. as much as I like Hamzat in this fight, that part does scare me because – I'm not ready to write off Kamar Usman. I just think that Leon Edwards is sign is just so good. Like he's so well rounded. Like you said, he's worked on his wrestling, his grappling, 
And when you watch that man hit pads, like, it's clean, bro. His striking is super clean. clean. It's different, right? It's yeah. different. You can see it. Wow. Like, wow, he's clean. The kicks and everything. Uh, I, it's hard, you know, like, when the fight, when a fighter dominates, like, dominates the way Kamara did. Yeah. And then you lost by knockout. And then you got a rematch right back in the loss again. That does something with you mentally, right? I think he, yeah. he, he, he's your, your kryptonite or you lose a little bit of confidence. He, he's, he's, yeah. he's, you being the boogeyman, the number one, the champ champ, number one pound for pound, and then you lost twice. I, I do believe he plays a factor in you. And I'm going to face a guy as Hamza Shimaev, a freaking monster. Mm -hmm. The guy, is, man, guy shows up to fight. Move up on the weight, getting that fight on short notice is scary. Yeah, but on the other side, to have the balls to get this fight in 10, 11 days notice, it takes something, right? I don't know. So here's the question that yeah. I don't know the answer, but here's <laughs> the question: Did Kamaru got this fight because you might have an excuse on the back and say, oh, it was only. 10 days, 11 days, yeah. up on the way, what you guys want. So that's the thing. Sometimes you get a fight with an excuse, a lot to gain, a lot of gain. Everybody will be a math, wow, tomorrow. But you have an excuse on the bag. Or sometimes, you know what, that, that shit happened with, with Liam. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I'm good. I know who I am. Let me face that boogeyman and get the respect back. So that's... That's my question. Which Kamara got the fight? The one that has an excuse on the bag or the one that like, I'm back right. and I'm going to beat these guys. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, I like that. And I like that. And, you know, in the sports betting world, it kind of reminds me of like, if you're betting a parlay or a long shot, you're like, oh, it's not supposed to win. It's not going to hit. But if it hits, you're the hero. And that's how I look at Kamara Usman in this fight is, you know, odds makers right now, and I want to get your opinion on this, um, and since we're already talking about this, we'll come back to the, the Johnny Walker fight because I want to hear your opinion on that too. <laughs> but right now, Hamza Chemaev is a minus 340 favorite with Kamar Usman as a plus 260 underdog. That's as of today. So the implied probability, okay. so with Hamza as a minus 340 favorite, that means odds makers believe he is a 78% chance wow. of winning this fight. I want to ask you as someone who has fought both of these guys, do you feel that odds makers are overvaluing Hamza giving him a 78% chance to win his fight? Or do you think this is more of a 50-50 toss-up? I think they, they're giving too much to Hamza. I would say I'll get out for sure as an odd maker. As I fought both of these guys. Those these two guys are monsters. Like those two guys, like they can fight, they show up, they're not scared. Uh and I, I I'm hoping, I'm so pumped to this fight. I think it's gonna be a crazy <laughs> fight. But I would I would not give him more than 60, 40 to, 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 Hamza. to Hamza. That's the maximum. But I would say yeah. 55, 57 the most. But I think it's that close. But I think the fight, we're going to see the results of the fight. We're going to see who's going to win the first round. Because another question that I have, that's, I don't have the answer, just have the question, is Hamza is going to be able to take Kamara down? It's a maybe. If he does, he's a wrap. If really? that guy gets on top, yeah. Mentally, you, you, you yeah. know, the, I know Kamara has that ego. If you be able to take him down, and the guy is stronger. If he controls, whew, yeah. then he might get a finish. So in my breakdown, correct me, you tell yeah. me if you think this is accurate, but in my breakdown video, I said, if Kamaru takes down Hamza, I think Hamza's going to be able to pop right back to his feet. Yes, I agree. But if Hamza takes down Kamaru, I think Hamza will be at least holding him down some. And the one concern I have for Kamaru in this fight is if Hamza takes that fight to the ground. Like when Hamza was fighting you, he was scared of the threat you possess off of yeah. your back. You had the submission abilities. You had the sick hammer fist off your back, <laughs> <laughs> the kicks yeah. off your back, all sorts of shit, right? But we've never seen... You know, we never see, I've never seen, you maybe have, I've never seen Usman do anything like that. And granted, no, he hasn't yeah. been in that position, he, which he, is a bit. He point. was. Yeah. In the first round with to Leon. Leon. To Leon. Once. And Leon dominated that on top when he mount, come on, yeah. did a move, gave up the back. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I think if Hamza gets, 
I think that's who, that's going to be the answer that we want. If Hamza take him down, I think it's a wrap. Hamza, and do you think, do you, do you see, because because I have a, a round one bet on this, I want to hear your opinion. Do you see a higher probability of him getting, if it goes to the ground, a submission or a ground and pound? Because I, I think a submission. Submission. Because I, so. I think a ground and pound, but then Kamara is going to try to hold on something and then you're going to end up giving up a submission. You know, you're not going to just eat those points and defend. He knows. He knows the steps, you know, to defend. Yeah. And then whenever you do the steps, the submissions are right there. I just think, but I have the same mentality as you. That's the way I see. If Hamza take him down, and that's, I'm going to explain you why. If Kamar take him down, Kamar is going to be double leg, single leg, American wrestling. Mm -hmm. If Hamza takes Kamar down, it's not going to be him. It's going to be body locks. And... The different the difference from the American style for the Dagestan style, Chechen style is when those guys take you down, it's just kinda of like a judo throw. They're gonna land. They're not gonna get your legs landed and then try to work and you sit up and push the head. No, they're gonna mm -hmm. land like a judo throw, like bam. And that's very hard to escape from that if you're not for me, that I'm a jiu jitsu guy was was a fight to escape. Oh shit! Now I got eight so much. Let me give it a little bit back to escape. But then yeah. the threats make you overthink. Oh shit! But I don't think I'm ever gonna have that type of grappling to be like. And the, and that's the question. But it comes with another question. To get to that body lock on tomorrow, it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of energy. So. And that's the thing. He might get super tired and waste a lot of energy to take Kamara down, just like he did with uh, Kevin Holland. Yeah. That was like two minutes of scramble energy. Yeah. Bro, I, I, I said this 100 times. I think if that Kevin Holland fight goes another 60 to 120 seconds, I think it could have drastically Over. changed. That, but that's, that's what can happen in that fight because the way I see even Hamza in the, in the press conference, oh, that's different in wrestling. I think the way I kind of see it, I think he wants to prove that his wrestling is better than Kamara. And, and there's a lot of variables to that because we are we're going to a fight, right? I'm going to fight you. You're going to fight me. Yeah. I just win the fight. I don't want to say, oh, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I do better bets than Maddie. I, I <laughs> look better in my head. I don't want to do that. I yeah. just, it's just one competition that I want to do. Whenever we try to do more competition, it's more pressure. If I want to say, okay, but my, my wrestling is better, my grappling is better, my fan base is bigger, I have more money. Like, whenever you try to compete more, mm -hmm. not even knowing, it's, you bring a lot more pressure. Just try to yeah. win the fight is enough. So I think he brings that. So he might be able to get Kamaru. And that's, that's another question that I have. Yeah. He's... Is he willing to waste a lot of energy to take Kamara down? If he does, it's worth, like, was with Kevin Holland. Yeah. But let's just pretend Kamara defends that he wastes a ton of energy. And what happened after that? Right. And that's why I think, I personally think Hamzat's going to come out and strike with him early. I really do. I don't think he's going to, like, he, he, he was, didn't even dap up Kevin Holland. He just shot for the takedown, yeah. right? He didn't even touch gloves. Like, boom, right for the takedown. I don't see him doing that to Kamar Usman. I personally think he's going to strike with him a little bit. Um, I think both guys are going to strike. I mean, we see when wrestlers sometimes fight each other, the striking is, you know, it turns into a striking match. Um, we'll see what, what happens, you know, who shoots first. Who do you if, think shoots first? Uh, I, I think Kamar, no, no, I think, I think Hamza would shoot first. How long? 30 seconds? No, they I think they're going to strike for, for a couple do, minutes. That he, that he should it before. Yeah, but they have a, 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 a timer for that. <laughs> I want to bet that he's going to shoot before one minute. He's really? Shoot. I think so. You think Hamza will shoot under 60 seconds? I think so. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so I'll tell you personally what I bet on the fight. So I have Hamza inside the distance, meaning he just has to finish him before 15 minutes is up. Okay. It can be a knockout. It can be a submission. It's around even money, so a $100 bet would return 100 in profit. Now, I also have, this is the long shot bet I have. I have Hamzat by knockout in round one. The That's reason not, I think this is five, I think it's plus 500. The reason I think this is I think that over Kamar's entire career, he's always the one 
coming forward. And I think this is going to be yes. a car crash yeah. early with both guys coming forward. And I want to ask you this. So you fought both guys. I want to ask you who has the edge in different categories. Okay. So up first, strength. Who do you think is a stronger guy? Uh, Hamza. Fight IQ. Kamara, by far. Wrestling. If I said it's different, you know, like pure wrestling, I would say, wow, I don't know. Like You can give it a draw if you it's, want. It can be a draw because it's different. Like one yeah. guy is the leg, double leg, the other guy is more body lock. I think both guys are very, very high level in wrestling. All right, we'll go to draw then. Power, power on the feet. Power. Striking. Kamaru TKO me. Hamza was just a decision. <laughs> on the power punches, I, I think Kamaru. And punches, yeah. who do you think is the better takedown defense? Because Hamza's at 100%, Kamaru's at 97, which 97, the best in the UFC throughout a certain period of time. On the defense, I think Kamaru is better defense. I think. Interesting. I think if Kamaru really shoots on Hamza, I don't know if he will, but if he really does, I do think Kamaru can take him down. Yeah. I agree he could get a takedown in the fight for sure. Um, all right, so we've, we've broken down a lot of this fight. I want to come back to the Johnny Walker fight, but let's it, let's go to the main event first, okay, right? Okay. And then we'll at the end here, we'll come back and just give you your quick picks for the main card, right? Okay. So we have Alexander Volkanovsky taking on Islam Makhachev. This is a rematch. So right now, Volkanovsky is sitting as the plus 200 underdog with Islam as the minus 260 favorite, right? So this is an implied probability by odds makers, and I want to ask you again here. 73% the odds makers are saying that Islam will win this fight. I want to ask you, do you give Volk better or worse than a 70 than a 27% chance of winning? I give a lot better. You think I it's closer to 50-50? Closer. This freaking guy was there in Australia. <laughs> And he's, I think, just born, and he's a maniac. And he was training. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm taking my time, but I'm going to train. The guy go run, go lift, still training. He's a maniac. Like, I saw, I didn't saw a lot that Kamar was one of those. Kamar, like, no, I'm telling you, no days off for these guys. Those guys are like, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not as close to Kamar right now that I used to be. But before, that guy was a maniac, like. Sunday running, lifting, training, drilling. That are like, man, all days off. No days off, brother. Like, what? Okay, <laughs> let's go. But, and Volkanovski is one of those. So I was in Australia when we was uh, at the Sanya in, in Strickland not long ago, and that guy was on that mentality. And then he got a short notice. The question that intrigues me the most on the main event is I saw a couple times Islam saying, Oh, I didn't feel anything against Charles. You know, I didn't feel he's strong. He didn't punch hard. I took him down so easy. I submitted him so easy. And that's the thing. Sometimes when you fight a guy, any other competition, they you dominate the guy so easy. I don't think that pushes you to train harder, to do more. Like, sometimes I'm going to face a guy and it's going to be a war and we're going to do a rematch. I know I got to do more. I know that guy's going to still come in. Mm -hmm. But if I go out there and I destroy the guy, <laughs> no, we know and I feel anything, for sure still going to do my homework. But I don't think you're going to do nothing extra. Yeah. So, and then you're just doing enough. You're working, doing enough. Ten days before, <laughs> they change it. Your easy fight for the hardest fight you ever had. I, I think that's like, man. I think he's like, like man, should I work harder for this fight? I don't know really? who's going to be. I, I do think he, when I saw him a couple of times on the beginning saying, I don't know why I got that feeling of like, oh, I don't know. Like he wished he worked a little bit harder mm. because right now he was already in Abu Dhabi. And the thing is, if you're fighting Charles, you're going to get a couple skinny, tall guys, little like kind of kickboxing kickers, stay for Grappler, not a lot of, I don't know, not a lot of takedown defense. Charlie really doesn't care if you take him down. So right. now you're fighting a freaking short guy, <laughs> maniac, don't give a, a shit, just go forward. Boxer, 
I just think it's so much change, you know, and they're like, you should be like, man, now I gotta fight this guy. And that guy is coming to, to a re revenge. He just, he, I don't think Volkanovski is showing up for the money. I don't think, and he I doesn't, agree. I agree. and he doesn't have, like with Kamaru, we kind of pull up that, oh, he's coming with an excuse or he really comes to show up. With Volkanovski, I don't think he's coming up with an excuse. He's coming up with a revenge, like, man, I'm gonna, I almost did it. I, and I think he's, on my mind, I don't know if it's true, but he's so maniac that for sure, <laughs> if I do, I do believe he's more maniac than me. I, whenever I, I fight, I win or I lost, that whole week, I fought Saturday night. Until the next Saturday, I will watch my fight so many times and I make so many notes and I look at it again. I don't know. And one time, I'm so maniac that I sometimes, oh, the fight is right here, and I put a paper, and then I want to see what I'm seeing. Okay, and then I, mm -hmm. and the fight is over, I do my nose, and then I do the opposite, and then just look at the guy, and then, oh, okay, I show that. So, so I want to, and I will watch, we will watch, we will watch, we will watch so many times. That guy is as crazy as me, or maybe more. I think he did that again. So yeah. I do think every mistake that he made it, or anything, good that Island did he fixed it I do I don't know it but I do believe he fixed yeah. it and now going to a rematch I, 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 I'll, if I if I don't bet but if I was betting I'll put big money on Volkanovski so, so it sounds like you think Volk coming in on short notice is just as much a disadvantage to Islam as it is what? Volk 100% wow and I fought on short notice yeah. And I'm going to give you two examples. First short notice, uh, I was fighting that Russian dude. He was getting ready for, uh, I think, a strike. I don't know who the guy, who's, I don't know who got hurt. And then I, I jumped in and got this opportunity for this guy. Win the first round, got so tired the last round, won by decision. And then I was getting ready for a grappling match, ADCC tournament, big tournament. So I was grappling a lot, the whole mouth, strength, conditioning, everything. They called me, hey, Tiago Pitbull Alves got hurt and he pulled out in a fight in their market against Gunnar Nelson. And when I say yes, I just like it because thinking about strategy, Gunnar Nelson was getting ready to fight Pitbull, a, a striker, a kickboxer. Now he's gonna fight another grappler. My grappling was so on point because I was training a lot, a lot of grappling for the ADCC. Mm -hmm. Right away, I liked the fight just because it messes with you. Yeah. Because you, like, that's why I, I, I like Volk because I think Isla, he was getting ready for Charles. Yeah. And now he's fighting the one of his hardest fight he ever had. That's why I like, man, Volk's loud. If Volk, and the Volk that I knew a little bit, I don't know Volk that much, a little bit that I knew the guy was a maniac training, ah, he's gonna show up, bro. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I will say, I do think Volk has a bit a better chance of pulling the upset than I think Kamara does. I agree. Um, all right, so let me ask you this. Alexander Volkanovsky submit, never submitted in his, in his UFC career, has been knocked out once, a long time ago. Could you submit? Could you submit Volkanovski? <laughs> in a grappling, in a training, or in a fight, you think? Either. I think I think I can submit him. Just the way he defend the back. I I was doing so many drills, like for for the for the Damian Maia fight, so many things. I know the defense, the escapes that he did, I just think he, I, I can get it. I can fin if I get the back the way Islam did, I can finish him on the back. Do you think Islam can submit him? No, yeah. He's, he was broke. Right. He took the back, he don't even try, you know, like, and he's good, don't get me wrong, Islam is very good, but you know that guy that has your number? That yeah, guy yeah, on the yeah. school that like, <laughs> you fight everyone, you go against anyone, but that guy, I don't know, he felt something to you that he said something. It's like Alex Pereira versus Adesanya. Yeah, he's that guy that, <laughs> they're like, man, like I, I, I don't care if I fight anyone, but that guy when he comes, he brings a different energy. 
they cannot even say nothing back. It's just like, man. <laughs> you know that guy? I think Volkanovski is that guy for East Long. I don't think he's not going to be able to finish him. So I'll tell you what I bet in, in the main event. So you can take, in, when you're betting on USC, you can do what's called a double chance bet, okay. which means there's three ways to win, right? Knockout, submission, and decision. You can pick two of the three okay. and get better odds. So instead of me taking Islam to just win the fight, which is expensive, right? He's minus two, minus 260, right? I took him double chance to win by knockout or decision. Because I agree with you. I don't think he can submit Volkanovski. So yeah. I ended up getting that bet at minus, I think it was minus 110. Um, so it's pretty much like a pick em. It's like 50-50 okay. bet. So that's what I ended up going with in the main event. I hate having, being honest with you, I hate having both favorites in the main and the co-main. I'm an underdog guy. I like betting underdogs. <laughs> but I just think that these are these very tall tasks for both these guys. Not They're not coming in off the couch, right? They stay in shape, but... Going all the way to Abu Dhabi, fighting guys that have been training for a long time this year for these fights. I just think the task is too tall. But again, I think if a dog wins, I think it's going to be Volkanovski. So, all right, I want to, okay. before we wrap up here, I want to just go through the main card. Okay. We're going to put a parlay together. I know you can't bet, but if you could bet, okay. basically the way this parlay is going to work is we're going to go over one, two. I, I go under dog all day. <laughs> I see it. We're going to go the five main event fights. Okay. We're going to skip the prelims. Okay. And I'm going to okay. give you Where? each fight. And okay. all you have to do is pick the winner. Nothing fancy, no over-unders, no exact outcomes. Okay. It'll literally uh, just be fighter A versus fighter B, and you pick the okay. fighter. So uh, up first, we have Gafarov versus Saeed Nurmagomedov. Who are you going with? Who's that? Who's that fight? What yeah, way is that? Here, so. Saeed, right? That's a uh, bantamweight. Yeah. So who, Saeed who? versus uh, Gafarov. Who's the, the underdog there? So Saeed's a minus 200 favorite, or minus 220 favorite. Gafarov's... Like, I, 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 I'm team underdog. Taking the underdog. Yeah. All right, so Gafrov for leg number one. Up next, we have Ikram Alskarov <sighs> versus Alves. Ikram is a huge favorite, minus 600 yeah. favorite here. Who do you like? I train you both guys. I, that one cannot go team underdog. I got to go with Ikram. Ikram. I train you Ikram a couple times. Ikram, that camp that he did to fight Hamza, he did with us. He was training with us at the same time that Kamara was getting ready to fight Tyron Woodley, so he was here. Ingram was that good, but then when he was here, he liked it a lot, but he ended up losing the fight. So whenever he came back, he went to ATT. He didn't. He didn't train with us no more. But Ingram was, dude. I'm so was I'm that good. I'm super high on him. I rewatched the the, the Phil Hall's fight right against good. him, and bro, he put that one two down the middle. It was so sharp yes. and put him out. Cold. It wasn't a TKO. He got good he eyes because no one sees up. that. He's he's striking so sharp. Like he's I, that so good. I bet him round one knockout, three to one odds. Wow. I love he's that, that bet. Good. I love that bet. He's so that you're good. making me feel more confident on it. He's that good. All right. Up next, we got Magomed Ankalaya versus the Brazilian Johnny Walker. Who you going with? I'm going with Ankalaya. I think Johnny Walker is too wild, too crazy. I do believe, just like you said, that he's getting more mature, getting fighting a little bit better. IQ is kind of coming, but I just believe Ankalaev fights so smart. He he don't care if they booing him, if if he gotta make an ugly fight. So I got Ankalaev. How's the odds if he finishes? Yeah, he's like minus three. He's I, minus three thirty five. By knockout. Uh, by knockout, it's like even money, pretty much. His knockout prop is plus 120. Okay, I go... You can um, just go money line, though. There's okay. going to be a five fight. Okay, pick Yeah. So we got... So Magomed Ankalaev, yeah. the co-main event. I know you said it's 60-40, but who are you going with just to I win the fight if you had to pick? I go both team, uh, both team and the dog on that one. I go Kamara Usman. Kamara. With the upset, uh, grinding out the decision. I like it. And then for the main event, I'll let you say it even though I know who it is. I'm gonna get for sure. I'm Team Volk for the big upset. <laughs> maybe by TKO, I'll, I'll, I'll risk it TKO, but mm. maybe by decision. But yeah, I go Team Volk and I'll be so happy if you win. So Volkanovski by knockout? Yeah. Plus 500 See, odds. Five to one. All right, but for the sake of the parlay, for this is Gilbert's 
This would be Gilbert's parlay if he could bet. <laughs> in the main event, Alexander Volkanovsky plus 205. In the co-main event, Kamaru Usman plus 265. Then we have Magomed Ankalaev minus 335. Ikram Alaskarov minus 590. And Gafarov as a dog plus 180. You ready for this? I'll, I'll take Ikram out of the parlay because you don't need, right? He's yeah, but it, it'll add a little bit to it. Yeah, okay. So a $100 bet. If he goes five for five there, forty seven hundred in profit. I'll, I'll give I'll give you <laughs> I'll give you hundred dollars to do it for me. He, I cannot do it, but you do it for me. Here, here. <laughs> do it off camera. <laughs> hundred dollar bet returns you forty seven hundred in net profit. I gotta be honest, it's a good parlay, even though I'm on the opposite side of the the main and the co main. But I like the first few picks in it. Who, who, any, which one is your pick? You pick Saeed? I love Saeed. Yeah. I love so Saeed too. You want to change it to him? I, I like the guy too. That guy, yeah, Gafurov, he's, he's a yeah. dog. You know? He's and got now, good power in wrestling. Yeah. But Saeed, so Saeed is a different level. Saeed is a, he's like a, the doctor one, the, the, the 145 that, that he retired, became a doctor now. Oh, who's that? You know, you know what we're talking or no? Mm. Uh, ah, I forgot his name. His name, the one forty-five. He's supposed to be a champion. Everyone said, "Oh man, that guy's him? gonna." It's a beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Saeed is that good. Like him. Saeed is that good. So here's what I'll say about Saeed. I think Jonathan Martinez is really good, and he yeah. almost submitted Jonathan Martinez in the first round, and then Jonathan Martinez, and then it went in the decision, but it was razor close. And then jo Jonathan Martinez the very next week. Finishes Adrian Yanya. So I, I know you're not supposed to do MMA math, but I think that Saeed's really good. I have him submitted uh, Gafarov in this fight, so I like his money line and I like his submission props. But we'll, we'll keep you at the dog here. So you got Ikram money line, Gafarov money line, Ankalaev money line, Kamar Usman money line, and Volkanovsky money line. Yes. 100 hours pays 4700 in net profit. That is Gilbert's parlay for everyone. I love it. I love it. Any last thoughts or bold predictions on the card? It can be uh, prelim, main events, anything that sticks out to you. Uh, I think that fight's going to be good. The Bruno Silva against that guy, Sharon. Oh, man. I would love to get your opinion on that because Bruno Silva is like a plus 250 underdog, which... To me, that's a little disrespectful. This guy's making very, his UFC debut. disrespectful, yeah. Right? And, like, but, Brendan Allen's really good. Yeah. It's no shame in losing to him. Um, Alex Pereira, he went the distance with. And he shows up, bro. That Bruno Silva shows up. Yeah. But that guy, when I saw that guy has 10 knockouts, or, like, 11 wins, 10 knockouts, I was like, oh. But who's he fighting, you know? Yeah. So. Who, who's testing him? <laughs> right? <laughs> guy, and he look like, he's, he look, I don't know. Yeah, yeah they, so he, he, he's like a sniper, you know, and he fights off his back foot and then he throws a jab out there and he's like a sniper, man. He, but, like, that's why I think that fight could end up going a little bit longer than people think. Yeah. Like, a lot of people think it's going to be like a first-round finish one way or the other. No, 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 no way first-round finish because Bruno is very smart. He, the guy can fight. He fought uh, Pereira very good. He fought a couple guys. He, yeah. He's going to show up and then he's a dog, you know. He likes when people – he's that guy that – you see the odds like he's that? He's like a born he underdog. Goes, yeah. He's gonna be. He's gonna grow out of Damn, that. Damn, I kind of want to add that. I want to take his like money Bruno. line on my card now. I'll, I'll, I was this close to putting it on my USC card. I'll put um, Bruno on, on my parlay for sure. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, he would make the parlay bigger. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I like that fight right here. The Nathan Nathaniel Wood. Wood yeah. I like this guy a lot. Yeah. Yes. This guy he's fighting has serious power on the feet, though. Have you seen? Yeah. Him? No. Yeah. I actually like the dog in that fight a little bit. Um, yeah. But I think if Nathaniel Wood wins, it'll be like so a unanimous decision. It's going to be a, decision gonna be a crazy card. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, who else here? What do you think about this, Cedrique Dumas? And Dumas and uh, yeah, I, was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like the <laughs> Mokaev and Team Elliott. Yeah. Elliot's going to be the first guy that can really grapple against Mokaev. It should be a good one. Yeah. Mokaev is favorite, not for sure. He's like right? an over a three to one favorite. Yeah. You bet on him or? I took him by submission. Tim Elliott's been submitted five times, and I just think Mokaev is like, has really good submission threats, but 
I think Tim Elliott has the ability to pull the upset off in that one. Yeah. Um, I, just I think Mokaev by decision. I don't think he's going to finish. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. I'm excited for tomorrow, but I'm pumped for those, for these main event. Main event is going to be Dude, it's going to be an absolutely electric. So. Crazy. All right, well, we will wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Matty Betts podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash that like and subscribe button. And you can find my full UFC betting card for free on all platforms, Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't checked out Gilbert's YouTube channel, go do that now. He does a full breakdown that goes way more in depth than we did today on the co-main and the main event for UFC 294. We'll see you guys next time on the podcast.